I traveled billions of light years away from the earth to heaven. Here's what happened when I saw a royal figure that everybody bowed down to. Keep watching until the end to find out what this person told me to do if we mess up in life. You will absolutely love this near-death experience. If you like near-death experiences, consider subscribing. Also like the video so you can receive more interesting and eye-opening stories. Alright, let's get to the story. My name is Philip Shepard. On September 27, 1986, I was participating in my second 150-mile bicycle charity ride, sponsored by the hospital for a woman who passed away from kidney failure, and this memorial ride was named after her. It was a hot September morning that day with dry weather approaching our area from the north, which would put our ride into a relentless headwind. Everyone would have to struggle to keep up the speed and pace to finish the 150-mile charity ride before the cutoff time of 12 hours. Unfortunately for me, a perfect storm occurred that briefly ended my life. When the 300 cyclists left the Corpus Christi early in the morning, I immediately sprinted in front of the group and went as fast as I could to get as close to San Antonio before the wind direction changed. Around 45 miles into the ride, I suffered a flat tire on my bike and was having trouble changing the tire until a help vehicle came up to assist me. I lost around 25 minutes trying to get the tire changed. The crew inside the vehicle said that I had fallen too far behind and they would have to end my ride unless I really gave my all to catch up to the bicyclists who were about four miles ahead of me. So I rode as hard as I could. Then the wind shifted. Since I was by myself, I had to take on the full force of the wind without shielding from others. I also had to deal with the temperatures, soaring upwards to around 86 degrees. Despite the extra effort taking a toll on my body, I was determined to catch up to the group. Twenty miles later, as I was traveling on the northbound side of the highway, the crew forced me to stop. They were saying that I made a valiant effort to catch up with the group, but they had to end my ride under the bridge we were approaching, so I got off my bike. I was extremely disappointed because I had been through so much over the past 65 miles. That is when I knew I was in trouble. As the adrenaline was leaving my system, I noticed that my body was starting to shut down. It felt like my vital organs were crashing and starting to fail. There were three nurses with the crew, and they noticed how rapidly I was deteriorating. They suggested to another cyclist to help me keep moving, but it was too late by then. I was getting dizzy and fell to the ground. As I remembered looking up at the beautiful blue sky with the patchy cumulus clouds and thinking, My life is over, Lord. It is in your hands now. I was never afraid during the whole ordeal. Actually, I was relieved. I was doing great things for the people around me by getting involved with activities such as bicycle charities. Yet, I secretly felt this was a cruel world, and I was relieved to finally get away from it. After the experience, my frame of mind during the NDE was crucial because, over the years, skeptics tried to annul my story saying that I probably wanted to live. Ergo, that is why I had the hallucination experience. I could confidently counter their assumptions by saying I didn't want to live anymore and was glad to leave the cruel world behind. My subconscious mind should have allowed me to cease to exist when I died. But something truly amazing happened that day. Although I considered myself to be a strange Christian, I never really understood why I had an atheistic frame of mind during the process of my death. I fully expected to lose consciousness and cease to exist. However, my consciousness never ceased. In fact, it felt like I was obtaining a superconsciousness. The same types of superconsciousness I observed from the deceased people who contacted me from my past experiences and observations of them. As I was going through the dying process, I was lying down the same way my earthly body was lying down facing up looking at the clouds, and then things got weird. I like math, but my incident happened in 1986, and I didn't know anything about quantum physics. Yet, it seemed like I experienced a strange quantum quandary during my transition from life to death and back to life. At first I was in my body and then I was somewhere else simultaneously. It was almost as if my body became entangled from point A, where my deceased body was at, to point B where my spiritual body resided. I thought I didn't exist, but if I didn't exist, why do I still have superconscious thoughts? During the process of travel from point A to point B, it almost felt like my composition fell apart, and I became an infinite amount of vibrational string frequencies that became particles of matter when interacted with by an unknown force. I was unable to grasp my bearings. I was up, down, sideways, here, there, everywhere, and nowhere simultaneously in a place that doesn't exist. So if I passed through a tunnel, or in the presence of a bright light, I couldn't see it, because for some unknown reason I was temporarily blinded by my dying process. 
For normal people, I would imagine that this type of experience would be terrifying. But for me, I'm extremely weird, haha. I loved every moment of it. The things happening to me were strange and peculiar, but I was in a world of bliss seeing all the complexities unfolding around me, wondering what amazing thing would happen next. I was never in fear that I may blink out of existence. I was too happy to see all the amazing miracles that were happening around me throughout my whole ordeal. I was never able to see, talk, or move in that area, but I was not concerned because my condition felt like it was going to be temporary. I felt like I needed time to adjust to this beautiful, peaceful area. I could only detect from the visions of my mind, and then my superconscious mind detected their presence when they came to me. They gently surrounded me with the unbelievable, unconditional, pure love and concern they had for me. It was so awe-inspiring and the feelings of home, family, love began to resonate from these non-human creatures as they surrounded me. I wish everyone could experience such love in its purest form. I couldn't talk to these gentle, loving entities, but I tried to think to them that I was okay and not going to freak out by all the strange and scary experiences that happened to me. Because by human standards, I am a very strange and weird person, so I have an open mind, and absolutely nothing frightens me. Then without warning these loving creatures suddenly withdrew from me and began to bow down. It caught me off guard and I had some concern that maybe they were in trouble. But as my mind probed their situation, I noticed that as they were bowing down, they had such beautiful smiles of respect and awe. They were watching a great royal figure who was approaching them. I was so happy for my new spiritual friend's family that they were able to see such perfection walking towards them. But then I was caught off guard, because this perfected royal figure was not there to see them. It came to within an inch of my face and smiled at me with the same concern a parent would have for their child after they'd been involved in an accident. I still couldn't see, hear, smell, or taste, but my feelings returned. This royal figure just smiled and gently said something to the effect of, My child, why are you here? It is not your time to be here. I have to send you back. This incredible figure sensed my concerns and added, Don't be afraid when you return back to earth and make mistakes. Just live your life the best way you can and try to show the unconditional love for the people you meet, the same way my subjects shown their unconditional love for you. Don't be afraid if people believe in me or not. Just have faith that anyone you meet will be touched in some way or another from your experience, and let me handle the difficult job of judging people if needed. I felt this royal figure gently pick me up and take me back to my body that seemed billions of light years away. The journey back was so much more peaceful as we headed back to Earth. Then it felt like I had entered the atmosphere, the cumulus clouds above and finally to my body where my organs began to work again. The first words I heard were from the three nurses who were frantically working on me to save my life. I distinctly heard the head nurse say, I can't get his pulse. He has no pulse. Oh wait, he has a pulse now. It sounded like she had a sigh of relief. There were several tired, agitated cyclists who threw my body onto a trailer. I kept drifting into and out of consciousness. I was shivering uncontrollably from the freezing wind. I kept smiling because I knew I wasn't going to die again because it wasn't my time to go. I tried to sleep as much as I could while squished from the other cyclists crowded on the trailer with me. When our trailer was less than 10 miles away from our destination, everyone insisted I get on my bike and finish the ride since they thought I would be upset if I didn't. I had already had the ride of my life so the finish line everyone wanted me to complete paled into comparison to what I experienced. I secretly thought to myself, wow, returning back to this world is going to be much tougher than what I expected. In conclusion, I did travel billions of light years away from my body. I don't know if it was in a tunnel or not since I was temporarily blind by my ordeal. I also had the overwhelming feeling of unconditional love, family and home comforting my thoughts by extremely loving non-human entities. There was a royal figure who decided, without my consent, if I could stay with them or not. It was decided I must return back to Earth where I currently and happily reside at. But I wish I could have had the choice to stay there. The final and most frustrating part of my ordeal is that I am only speculating that the royal figure was Jesus Christ, but it never identified itself to me, so it would be wrong for me to say it was him without a doubt. Maybe that is where faith comes in with our religious views when we are in a near-death experience. Or maybe that royal figure didn't want us to get caught up in ideals of religious dogma. This religious figure could have represented Jesus, Miklantakutli, Ereshkigal, Sikol, Yomra, Anubis, Hecate, Odin, etc. 
But whatever this royal figure goes by, it is certainly the link to our creator, and that is what brings me peace from this whole ordeal. I hope my story was interesting, entertaining, and inspiring for you to live your life to the best of your abilities while we are graced by your presence on Earth. Philip's story was both captivating and inspirational, leaving us with a sense of wonder. Yet a lingering question remains. Do departed children continue to grow in heaven, or do they remain unchanged? Watch this next to understand just that.